Uh, I voted for Donald Trump. Why Donald? Why? Because uh, he's the best choice. Who did you vote for today? Oh, Donald Trump. Why Donald? I just think he's great. He made America great. You got your vote today. Trump did, of course. Yeah. Why Nikki Haley? Because I hate Trump. Why do you hate Trump? I just think he's a hateful man. I'm a Republican, been a Republican for life, but I skipped him in both elections. There you go. So. What's your sense of uh, how this is going to go? He doesn't have. She doesn't have a chance. Do you mind if I ask how you voted today? Uh, Haley. Oh, why Haley? Because I like her. You're the, the second person we've been able to find who voted for Nikki Haley today. <laughs> no, no way. How do you feel about Donald Trump? Uh, I like him too, but I like her better. That is just a taste of what people in New Hampshire are thinking as Donald Trump and Nikki Haley go head to head in the state's GOP primary. Former President Trump is likely to win the primary tonight, and what happens from here depends on his margin of victory. A commanding win would solidify him as the front runner, and the former UN ambassador could face increased calls to suspend her campaign. But if the margin is smaller than anticipated, the race could continue through the caucuses in Nevada and South Carolina in February. I don't care. Is she a threat to you? No, no, she, and I don't care if she stays in. Let her do whatever she wants, it doesn't matter. I can just say that there's never been a movement like this. Make America great again. In the history of our country, I just stop here and I figured I'd see three or four people and maybe walk inside and you see a crowd like this and this is, this we is organic. You. Former President Trump last night said you'll probably drop out today. What's your response to that? I don't do what he tells me to do. I've never done what he tells me to do. Um, look, I mean, I think I don't strong. I've always said we'll know strong when the numbers come in. Which Biden didn't even go through the steps to want to be on the ballot. Why do you want him as president so much that you're going to like say, oh, I'm going to go out of my way to write his name in there? He didn't even respect you enough to get his own name on the ballot. He's the president of the United States. And people can argue, oh, New Hampshire shouldn't go first and this and that, but I just think that it's more showing, it's the money. When you hear advertisements going right in Biden, he didn't want to be in the ballot. He doesn't care if he wins New Hampshire. Donald Trump is a threat to our democracy. And uh, he is a uh, narcissistic liar. And therefore, I am afraid of what he would do going into power. It's going to be, and you can take this to the bank, and you can hold me accountable for this next week. <laughs> it's going to be a romp. Trump is going to win substantially by a substantial margin. I, all of the, this has been pulled to death. All surveys from across the political spectrum all kind of say the same thing. So what happens here is interesting. This will be the first time a presidential candidate on the Republican side has won Iowa and New Hampshire in the same race. Even President Reagan didn't do that. So not saying it's not so you President Reagan, but this kind of means it's over because now it goes into South Carolina. And even though Nikki Haley was governor of South Carolina, every survey is showing her getting beat by 30 points in South Carolina. Yeah. So I think what you're going to see is Nikki Haley looking for a graceful way out pretty soon. Okay, well on that point, if you are right, and I think you are, and Haley loses by a considerable margin, when do you think she suspends her campaign? Okay, that's a great question. So here's here's my, uh, my prediction. I think she wants to do it before South Carolina. I don't think she'll want to lose or be embarrassed in her home state. Um, the money has already started to dry up for her. There's no path forward. Um, and I think she's young enough. In fact, I've met her and had her here at my winery and spent time with her. She's smart. She's young. She doesn't want to embarrass her, uh, have her be embarrassed in her own state. So she'll look for a graceful way out to preserve her options for 2028. So does she then get behind Trump, do you think, if she steps aside? Yeah, she will. She will. She signed the pledge. Uh, she's not a never Trumper. She ran against him. She'll do like DeSantis did in a and an exit in a graceful way to preserve her options again for her own future. Hey, this. I mean, it's 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 so extraordinary that you know you, you don't have many contenders left this early in the campaign. So what does it mean for the rest of the primaries if Nikki Haley drops out? Well, it's over. I mean, it's over now, essentially, but it's going to formally be over when she drops out because there's been nobody left, really, of any consequence. And the states that you're going into on Super Tuesday, which is March 5th, are all just states where Trump has enormous, an enormous lead, and they're the big delegate-rich states, California, Texas, and the entire South. So it'll be sewn up, and Trump will be probably the presumptive nominee, uh, probably, maybe even by the weekend. 
Okay, so l l let's say um, you're right, and uh, as I say, I think you are, but uh, look, New Hampshire is very small. So even if Nikki Haley loses, why not give it a bigger run and see how she goes in bigger states? So, uh, you know, traditionally, why is New Hampshire so important okay. in that respect? Great question. New Hampshire is the most friendly state for Nikki Haley in terms of her being a, a, a kind of a more, a, I hate to say the term moderate, but a, you know, a, a lighter version of Trump, a lighter, softer Republican. New Hampshire is the most friendly territory that's coming. All the states that are coming, the big ones on the Republican side, they're going to decide how delegates are distributed, which is how you win the nomination, are all far more conservative and more Trump friendly. So if she can't win in New Hampshire, it gets worse for her in these other states and it's more expensive with enormous uh, enormously expensive media markets so it gets harder for her so if she can't do well here um, there's she's going to do worse in these other states just given the political topography